For the daily radio news on Kettering University's 94.3 WKUFLP Flint, I'm David Jackson for Friday, June 3rd, 2016. Attorneys for the City of Flint denied a Flint Journal Freedom of Information Act request for emails involving Natasha Henderson's accusations. Gary Ridley of the Flint Journal reports that Henderson, Flint's former city administrator, recently accused Mayor Weaver of instructing staffers to direct donations to her personal fund rather than an official donation fund for the city's relief efforts. The emails in question may have contained statements from Henderson regarding her concerns over Mayor Weaver's instructions, but city attorneys refused to give over the emails, claiming that they were are protected under attorney-client privilege. Mayor Weaver is also accused of defaming and having Henderson fired over the allegations, to which Weaver has denied any wrongdoing. The Michigan Court of Appeals ruled in favor of a local government over a tax loophole that big box stores were using to dodge paying assessed taxes. Brad Devereaux on MLive.com reports that a loophole in the Michigan tax code is allowing multinational big box stores to dodge paying millions. Escanaba took issue with the idea of multi-billion dollar corporations paying less than local mom and pop stores and sued Menards to pay fair market taxes, which resulted in an appeals court ruling in favor of the city. Representative David Maturin of Brady Township introduced a bill in the House aimed at forcing big box stores to pay their taxes based on a more accurate tax assessment. And House Bill 5578 is currently in the House and local Michigan representatives are taking input from the public on the bill. A resolution to amend the Michigan Constitution was approved overwhelmingly on Thursday by the Michigan House that would require law enforcement to obtain a search warrant to access a person's electronic data or communications. Brian McVicker on MLive.com reports that the resolution would reaffirm the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution that protects against unreasonable searches and seizures. The measure comes at the same time that the U.S. government is handing over virtually unlimited surveillance powers to the FBI and other government agencies that could allow them to bypass constitutional protections in pursuit of a crime. Proponents of the bill say that this measure is necessary to further protect Michigan citizens from government overreach, while law enforcement agencies and others who oppose the constitutional amendment say that the U.S. Constitution already covers these protections and the amendment made would make it harder for law enforcement agencies to investigate cybercrimes and enforce cybercrime laws. The bill now moves to the Michigan Senate where it needs a two-thirds majority vote to be able to be placed on the November ballot. The United Nations has been accused of being responsible for a cholera outbreak in Haiti. The Takeaway.org reports that Doctors Without Borders estimates that since the first outbreak in Haiti five years ago, as many as 30,000 people have died of cholera and another 2 million contracted and survived the disease. A study in the journal Clinical Microbiology and Infection notes that the cholera outbreak first appeared in Haiti in October 2010 after a magnitude 7 earthquake hit the island nation, killing 160,000 and displacing millions. Journalists and scientists traced the infection to a U.N. compound that was housing peacekeepers that was dumping raw sewage directly into the local water supply. Author Jonathan Katz, the first journalist to report on the U.N.'s role in Haiti's cholera outbreak, says that the U.N. continues to deny involvement, but according to Katz, at the very beginning, there was an active cover-up that saw evidence destroyed and press releases being published denying any involvement based on so-called evidence that was just not true. Katz says that while the international community has claimed a victory over the disease, no real cleanup has happened and another massive outbreak could occur at any moment. In sports, the Detroit Tigers played the New York Yankees at home yesterday in a one-off April rainout makeup game. Detroit was the first to get on the board when Miguel Cabrera scored in the fourth off of a Justin Upton single, but New York promptly answered in the sixth and then put together four more runs in the top of the seventh, bringing their lead to 5-1. The Tigers then drove in a run every inning until the end of the game, but couldn't overcome the deficit, which handed the Tigers a 5-4 loss to the Yankees. Both the Tigers and the Yankees now have a 25-28 record, and Detroit plays again tonight at 7-10 to start off a six-game homestand that sees them against the White Sox, then the Blue Jays. In Game 1 of the NBA Finals last night, the Cavaliers' starting lineup scored a combined 79 points, But it wasn't enough to overcome the Golden State Warriors, who shot almost 50% from the field and saw the bench throw down 45 points in the Warriors' 104-89 win. 
For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.